Hey, this is Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. I wanted to walk you guys through a quick tutorial on how to connect and uh, pair up the uh, job link probes. We still have some questions on it sometimes, so what I'm gonna do here, I've got a set of job link probes. Mine are set up a little bit differently than maybe uh, some of you guys have seen. Uh, see, I have a couple extra probes in here. And one of the things I do is I always just mark them, uh, how I'm gonna use them. So you can see I've got a marked uh, liquid line, suction line, liquid line, discharge line. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn these three on here and uh, make sure all three have come on, so those are good. Then I've got my high and my low pressure probe. I just got an H and an L on here. And the reason I do this is, you know, obviously all these have this, um, this serial number on here, but it's just hard for me to remember which one's which. I know there's a switch here on these probes, but uh, we, we ignore the switch and, and measure quick uh, so you can map the probe however you need it. But um, it's just, a, just something we do a little bit differently. On these probes here, I've got, uh, this one's my, my spare one I use for some other duct testing and things in here. I've got this marked outdoor air, supply air, and return air. So we'll go ahead and turn these on and we'll power up all the probes and get them started. And this guy just got to push it, there we go. So now all, all the probes are up and running here. And so now we'll open up Measure Quick. And when you open up Measure Quick, you need to go into your toolbox, tap on the toolbox, and there's two types of tools. There's Bluetooth tools and there's data sharing tools. Data sharing is app to app. So if you open that up, this is the Testo Smart Probes. We'll talk app to app. They also talk to the application directly, but uh, we can take data from their app into our app. The capture hood, the 420, the 770 electrical meter, the 550, 557, all these are app to app communication. And then down here, we got a QR code. This is not the section we need to be in, but I just want to point that out. So on Bluetooth tools, you see there's no Bluetooth devices saved. So all I need to do is click add new tools. It's gonna scan and it's gonna find the job link probe kit. Notice it says Bluetooth tool kit because we're putting the whole kit in in one fell swoop. So I click on that. That's now installed it in my toolbox, but it's not active until I hit activate. As soon as I hit activate, it pulls up the probe manager. And if I tap on the probe manager, I can see which probes are mapped to what. So you can see if I look at my let's say my low pressure probe here, the one I've got marked L, that is 0368, that is 0368 here. So that's my low pressure probe. It's also showing my, my connectivity strength and my battery indicator. So this one's got a lower battery than my high pressure probe. I got my suction line temp, my liquid line temp, my discharge line temp, supply air temp, return air temp, outdoor air temp. If I turn on another probe at any time during this, what you're gonna see is, in a second here, that probe is going to drop in in the bottom. So this one's 3368, and now that's tied into the bottom of the, of the uh, probe manager. So you can turn them all on at once or turn them on one at a time, and they're going to pull in. And then we can tap to map. So this one's 0367 and 0368. Let me get the 67 here, is my outdoor air probe. If I take and map 0368 to outdoor air, what's going to happen is 0367 is going to drop to the bottom unmapped now. And so I can tell it what its job is. So every single probe, if I tap on a hydrometer, I can map it to supply, return, outdoor air, clear the mapping, right? In this case here, I'm gonna map my 6.7 uh, back to the outdoor air. So I'll, I'll click on that. And so now you can see 6.7 went back to the top. That's the one that I have marked ODA. I'll go ahead and turn this guy off here. And actually I can, before I do that here, I'll just go ahead and uh, clear the mapping on it, and then I'll power it off here so it's out of the, out of the circuit because I don't really need it for anything right now. So that you can see how everything's individual. So these are all hydrometers here. And then if I get into my like, uh, clamps here, I can put, go to the liquid line, suction line, discharge line, or vapor line. Vapor line's a true vapor line like on a heat pump system. Suction line's for air conditioning on here. So if you, if you have it tapped, uh, you want to tell it where you have it on the system, and that helps with the diagnostics. On, uh, on measure quick. Then you can see um, I've got the suction line temperature, high pressure. So these I can only map to higher or low pressure, but that's how you get them all in. Once I hit cancel here and go back to home, now you can see that these are all reporting. So there's my suction line, my superheat based upon a zero degree suction pressure, subcooling liquid. Then here's my return air dry bulb and wet bulb, supplier wet bulbs and dry bulbs. So all the data is coming in live uh, into the probes now. We can go ahead and we'll hook them up and take some readings here. You might get some small disparities here. This is just a uh, very small temperature differences between the probes. If I tap on the indoor, you can see I have a 10th of degree temperature split. Uh, Measure quick by default puts a nominal one ton in. So if I go into look at the uh, 
general configuration for cooling. In this case, I had it set for a ton and a half on the last system I worked for, worked on, and that was uh, what's calculating that small uh, bit of capacity, even though they're not hooked to anything, because it's using a default airflow number initially. But now that we got everything paired in and ready to roll, let's go ahead, we'll get these hooked up to the system, and I'll show you how to pull in the rest of the measurements. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hook these up to the unit here, and uh, let me go ahead and start pulling the caps off here. Again, we got these marks so you can see what's what on here, so it just allows you to attach them a little bit faster. This is the true suction on a heat pump. So we'll go ahead and get this lined up here and snug it up. So that's your true suction line. On the liquid line here, we could connect directly to the liquid line, but let me show you what I like doing here. This is that uh, uh, AccuTools uh, Schrader core depressor, and these are, you can, you can order these separately. It's actually a true service valve. So when you back this out, it blocks off flow to this port completely, and obviously it's not depressing the Schrader on the uh, liquid line. So this is just a, a little Appian uh, evacuation tee. And what I'm gonna do is hook this tee on here, and that way what I can do is I can uh, use one of these ports to measure pressure and one of them to add gas to the machine. Now there are no Schrader cores in these things, so you gotta make sure you have them capped, otherwise you're gonna spray yourself with refrigerant here, but I'll close this off here and we'll open up the far side of this where I'm gonna put the probe on this. We'll go ahead and connect this up. So it's just an easy way to, to um, it's just an easy way to hook this thing up and not have to deal with um, uh, having a, you know, uh, when you go to add gas in there, it just makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna connect this to the side here, and then all I'm gonna do is just open this up, just a little crack on here, so now that valve's open. You can see here I've got a pressure uh, showing on my gauge here, so I know my high and my low side are reading. Now I got my liquid line temperature. On these, it's really important you have clean copper on here, and when you connect it, it's gonna, you're going to hear it. If you open it up, it's going to go yellow, and, and until you until it gets a good connection, then it'll go green, and it'll give you a tone here to confirm that it's connected on there. Discharge line, I'm going to go and just connect to the side right here. So you can hear it beep, 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 and then it's telling you it's connected. And then suction line down here. And it's, I uh, just opened it up faster and connected and it could confirm. You don't have to get the confirm as long as you know the light's going green there, you know it's connected. So all these are flashing green and we're good to go. So now let's go over here and you can see I've got outdoor air temperature. Uh, these are, you know, again, Field Piece did a really good job with these, uh, all magnetic on here, so. Just stick this to the outside of the condenser. You just want to get air coming into your condensing unit, so you can see that's a good spot to do that. I'm going to take my supplier probe. You can do a couple different things on these. It's really important to make sure that when you're getting good readings on these that you put them in the right spot in the duct work. These are thin enough, you could just gently open up the between the fins here, just sort of slip it in place and slide it in and connect it to the register, but you want to be in the airstream. If you think about how this air is coming out of this register, you know, it's flowing this direction. It's gonna actually blow out here and it could create a, a, a circle of air right here just because it's in training air. It's coming out so fast here that it's pulling in room air behind it. So what'll happen a lot of times is if you put it right at the surface of the registers, you might get a, a false reading of warmer air than it really is. So you wanna make sure that you have it in the airstream. In this case here, I just drilled a hole in the duct here. I'll bend the probe in, put it in, and now I have it connected in the airstream. Usually I face these so I can see uh, that I've got the right probe mapped. Return air, we'll just come over here. And you know, these are magnetic, so again, you can just stick them right to the front of the return air grill here. This is, this is perfect, you don't have to go anything fancy, you don't have to put it inside the return air grill unless you want to. The key thing to remember is here, is if we have duct leakage downstream of the probe, you might see low capacity on the machine. So uh, I usually measure at the return air grill, and if I see a problem with low capacity, I just make sure I've not seen it. All right, so now the machine's been up and running for just a minute here. Let me go in, come in here just a minute so you can get a look here. I always just like to go into the probe manager, make sure things make sense. So you can see here's my low pressure at 108, my high pressure, suction line temperature at 36, liquid line temperature at 79, discharge lines 100 degrees, su supplier at 47, return air at, at 67, and outdoor at 65. These readings make sense, right? I'm not seeing things that I wouldn't expect to see on there. And that's really important when you go in and, and you, uh, you, you add in probes or you map probes that you make sure that everything's mapped to the right locations. So I hit the home button here now and I can start looking at the performance of the system. Now, there's two ways to navigate through MeasureQuick when you're doing this. You can tap the I button. You can see there's no double dots here, so that's just a single screen. 
If I go to the outdoor readings, the sunshine here, that there's two dots here, and that's telling me there's two screens. So this is the suction line, the superheat, the subcooling, and the liquid line. If I tap that again, the, the dot moves over here, and that's my outdoor air, my approach, my compression ratio, and discharge line. Same thing with the indoor readings, 66 and 52 return, supply, air temperatures. And then I'll go ahead and tap this uh, again, electrical readings and uh, performance. So now you can see my capacity, my sensible capacity, my latent capacity. Now some of these, you'll notice some different kinds of targets here. Let me point this out. So this return air dry bulb, it's 67 degrees in here. If I tap on that, it's gonna show me that the current value is 67. We wanna be uh, designed around 75 is the ideal place to check an air conditioner, but we can be between 70 and 85. Once you get outside of this range, it's really considered low load and uh, it's not ideal for checking an air conditioning system. So at 67, I'm showing you you're on the low side of that. Same thing with the return air wet bulb, it's too low. Now the temperature split, my wet bulb temperature, supplier wet bulb, oops, sorry about that. Supplier wet bulb is coming out in the green because it's okay. It's Even though the temperature's low coming in, the split's good. So these numbers are all right on here. If I go to here, you can see my enthalpy is on the low side of the change, my air flows okay but a little low my temp split because i have low airflow i also have a high temperature split on there so those two things sort of fall hand in hand now when you get into performance you know this is telling you more or less low good or high, or high when we get into the performance section and we tap that you'll see that this is on the lower efficiency side so i have low output so this yellow means i have lower capacity and over here in the green would mean higher capacity so when you look at these two things here, my sensible cooling is, is, is okay. I'm doing about 12,000 BTUs of sensible cooling, but my latent cooling is on the low side. Let me tap that again here. And then uh, if you touch any of these targets, it's just going to the targets and I got my hand in front of it, so I'm tapping it easily. What it's showing you is my sensible heat ratio is high, so I'm doing a lot of sensible cooling, which means my efficiency is also high. So this is just uh, different types of targets to tell you different things about the system and what's going on here. But that's pretty much it for field piece. Uh, when you go through, it maps everything to the app, maps everything to the targets, very easy to use, and uh, once you get this mapped in, you're good to go. If I power this off again, let me uh, double click it here, swipe the app shut. As soon as I open it up, go into the toolbox, tap on field piece, by the time I go to the home screen, everything's reading again, it's, it's that fast. Uh, the superheat will come in here just behind it here. So there's my superheat, my subcooling as those probes connect in. Outdoor air, return air, wet bulbs and dry bulbs, and everything's ready to read. So you can see how quick this is once you get the meters connected and uh, makes it real easy to manage the app and, and you're really good to go at that point. This is Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Thanks a lot for watching.